As for my haul, I did miss out on getting some really great items just for being too slow to pull the trigger, but I did get this custom. With Hasbro revealing Jane, Glenda Mulligan as the second stretch goal in their HasLab Dragonfly project, many G.I. Joe fans are wondering who this character is. Is it too much of a deep cut? Is she important? Is she too obscure? Either way, let's talk about it. While she's themed as a helicopter pilot, and I imagine some will use Glenda as a co-pilot of the Dragonfly, her aerial skills are consistent all the way back to her days as a vintage figure during the 1980s. And if you never saw or heard of Glenda during this period, you're not alone. The company Plastirama, based in Argentina, acquired the tooling required to make a series of figures under their G.I. Joe line titled Commandos Heroicos during the mid-80s. Their now famous second series included items that are now considered holy grails in the collections of many, namely Manle, Topson, Red Mac, Shimmick, Cobra Mortal, and of course, Glenda. Oftentimes, fans also include the Cobra Invasor figure from the previous first series of the Commandos Heroicos, and he is actually the easiest to find on the secondary market among the figures. These seven comprise the famous Arjun 7 that you sometimes hear hardcore G.I. Joe fans talk about. To give you an idea of how much these figures go for, have a look at the price of what it was being asked for at Joe Fest in June of 2023. And when it comes to good condition, complete figures of the Arjun 7 Joes, Long-time hardcore fans generally accept that most of them can go for well into the four digits each, and finding the set together like this is an absolute, extremely rare find. My personal experience at Joe Fest 2023 was seeing Glenda at the booth run by Roma Collectibles and seeing her for $600 on the second day of the show, which was Saturday. Her chrome was quite worn and also noticeably worn on the backside, which I did not get a photo of. Now while that seems like a high price and it does look like some sticker shock if you're not familiar with her, I did ask some of the more seasoned collectors of International Joes and several told me that they actually even spent more than that on her years ago for once in comparable condition and that was before the inflated price hike kicked in. Some people even told me that she was underpriced at this value even given the condition, if you can believe. I went as far as to mull it over during dinner, and yeah, that is indeed a picture of me and some friends at dinner where I stewed over it on Saturday night. I asked some friends at the bar after, including hardcore collector Darren Howlett, who runs the Legends of the Hidden Forest toy line, who doesn't even know that I took this selfie of him, but he was the first person to tell me about the Glenda character all the way back in 2018. Anyway, as luck would have it, someone else bought the Glenda figure when I walked away, and when I came back on Sunday morning, she was gone. I did end up splurging the funds I would have put towards Glenda on this fun school rescue squad that includes the super cop figure that looks like Sergeant Slaughter, which I talked about in my Joe Fest video experience. Point being is that Glenda is an extremely deep cut within the G.I. Joe lore, given that many hardcore fans don't even know about her, let alone casual fans. That being said, her vintage figure is considered as a holy grail to many as I mentioned. It does feel a little bit out of left field though for her to be included as a stretch goal and many expected another sub-team version of a more well-known character, but thematically as a pilot she does fit. Some have said that they would have preferred Quarrel, the Action Force Z Force figure who was also a repaint of Scarlet, to be included as a stretch goal instead, but do bear in mind that Quarrel is a motorcycle driver during the old Palatoy Action Force days and not considered as a pilot. Glenda's vintage Falcard, which is translated from Spanish, does indicate her piloting skills go all the way back to when she was 6 years old, and also that she went on to become an air intelligence officer and a helicopter co-pilot for dangerous missions. I'm not sure if this is enough to move the needle for Hasbro to generate more interest, and that's not what I'm trying to do here, but that's the story. As for the original Argent 7 figures in general, do note that they were released as straight arm figures in their vintage releases. As of the end of 2018, the custom figure company Red Lasers Army did do a run of swivel arm figures to differentiate them from the original figures and these are figures that I do own in my collection that I've mentioned previously. And also, all the way back in 2006, there was a G.I. Joe convention exclusive of the Cobra Mortal. 
To date, I have yet to see any re-release, be it custom runs or official O-Ring releases of Glenda. As for her comic story, the now non-canon G.I. Joe run by Devil's Due Publishing does include her as a character in issue number 38 of the main run, which ran from 2001 through to 2005. I do have this issue in my collection actually, and during this issue she was part of a small team along with Hardball and Rampart attempting to capture Big Boa and another historically foreign G.I. Joe exclusive character in Asa Negra. Unfortunately, Glenda and her companions were killed somewhat ingloriously during this mission. Given that these few panels represent more or less Glenda's only real appearance in storyline, and not even as a co-pilot, I can't say that there's a rich background for her as far as character development is concerned. But if there's a part of her history that I haven't covered, please do note it in the comments below, and do note that this part of her history in the comics does help us understand the character a little bit more. All in all, I don't think this character reveal will do much to change fans' opinions on whether it was a good or bad unlock stretch goal for the Dragonfly. You either already want the Dragonfly or you don't, and for some it'll be a figure add-on just for the sake of an additional figure add-on. For me, it's more about the personal story about missing out on a vintage Glenda only to find out that I could potentially get her in 6 inch scale and with the reveal happening within days of me missing the original figure. Comment if you like this video and be sure to check out some of my other content right over here. Subscribe if you already haven't, press that like button to spread this video to more viewers and share it with your friends. Otherwise, yo Joe, and I'll see you again next time. Take care.